You need to know how to name compounds where acids have reacted with metal or metal compounds. When a metal or metal compound reacts with acid, you end up with a product called a salt. Now you have to know how to name salts. They're not too hard to name. If you pick a really common salt, this is an edible salt. Sodium chloride. You'll notice straight away there are two parts. There's the sodium part and then there's the chloride part. Let's not concentrate on the sodium part now. You can see this exactly the same as the name of the periodic table. The harder part to name is the chloride part. The chloride part depends on which acid the sodium reacted with. The acids that are worth remembering because we use them a lot in school are hydrochloric acid, you can also use sulfuric acid, not very often but sometimes you might come across nitric acid. There are different acids and different acids give different names to the salt they make. Hydrochloric acid when it makes salts makes salts called the chlorides. Sulfuric acid makes a different salt, they're called the sulfates. Nitric acid makes salts called nitrates. Most of the acids end eights. Right, now let's see if you can name them. Zinc can react with nitric acid and it'll make zinc nitrate. Look, nitric acid makes nitrates and all we do is we take that name and we put it after the metal name. Let's give you another one. Magnesium can react with hydrochloric acid. What do you think it will be called? It'll be called magnesium. Chloride. Not so tough, is it? Let's see if you can do one more. Let's say sodium hydroxide. reacts with sulfuric acid. What salt do you reckon it'll make? That's right. Sodium sulfate. Let's make it a little bit more complicated now. When you get the metal and you react it with acid, you make a metal salt. The salt part of the name will come from the acid you've used, and the metal part will come from the metal part that you used. But you also make byproducts. Now, the byproducts will depend on the metal compound you've used. Now, metals 
if they react as pure metals, when they react with acid, make the metal salt and hydrogen gas. Now that, you get the squeaky pop test. Let's look at, say, lithium, for example, will react with hydrochloric acid. That will make lithium chloride and hydrogen. I can test with this and it'll give a squeaky pop with a lit splint. You can, however, use a metal compound, for example, metal hydroxide and an acid that will give salt and a different pride product this time it will give you water for example sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid gives me sodium chloride and water. Alternatively, I could use the metal oxide The equation for the reaction is sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid makes sodium chloride and water. I could use instead a different compound. I could have the metal oxide and acid. That makes the salt and water as well as a byproduct. Same as the hydroxide. Let's pick an example. Copper oxide. This is copper reacted with oxygen and say sulfuric acid. That makes copper sulfate and water. The equation CuO plus H2SO4 makes CuSO4 plus H2O. A slightly more complicated one because there's an extra byproduct is the carbonate. I can have metal carbonate and acid. Once again, I'll form the salt. I'll also form water, but I'll form an extra byproduct this time carbon dioxide. For example, calcium carbonate will react with sulfuric acid and make calcium sulfate plus water plus carbon dioxide equation being CaCO3 plus H2SO4 makes CaSO4 plus H2O plus CO2. Remember the tests? Lime water plus carbon dioxide turns milky 
Alternatively, the test for water. You use cobalt chloride paper. And that goes from blue to pink. What a nice little summary.